Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. Thank y'all so much for stopping by again. Locked up in Thailand. I want to welcome my guest, Martin O, to the show. He's got an amazing story and life over in Thailand. Let me just first start out by letting you just introduce yourself briefly, Martin. Absolutely. First of all, it's an honor and a privilege to speak to you. I've watched a few uh, videos on YouTube, you know, and there's no one that, that talks the sense you do. And I, I don't like waste time listening to idiots. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm delighted to, to speak to you. Uh, as, as you've said, um, I'm Martin, you know, and I'm, I'm from London. Uh, would you like me to say anything else about me? Or it, it, I have to say, it's, it's the first time I've done a stream, so I'm not quite sure how it all works. So I do need a bit of help. Yeah. Well, are you living in London now? Are you in London at the moment? I'm about 25 minutes outside London in a place called Hertfordshire. Okay. So when did you start going to Thailand? Yeah, I mean, Forgive me if, you know, I'm starting at the wrong point, but I'll do my best. But um, I was running the family business, you know, for 25 years. Uh, my brother, unfortunately, passed away unexpectedly in his sleep. Um, and, you know, he was putting a lot of money into pensions and investments and, you know, was due to retire when he was 60. And he, he died when he was 53. So I kind of thought to myself, you just never know when your time's up because he wasn't hospitalized. He wasn't ill or anything. It, and again, another chapter of the book, if, if you want to ask more about that, at some other time, I'll tell you everything. But it just l let me kind of reevaluate life and think things through. And uh, there's a bit more to life than um, sitting behind a desk, looking at a computer, looking out the window, seeing the same sort of people day in and day out. So I decided to um, do some traveling. And um, I, I think, as I said to you before, um, I had been to Pattaya back in the 90s when I was a very young man. Um, so, yeah, I always had that in the back of my mind. Um, so... First of all, I did actually go to the US because um, I wanted to go to Orlando, Florida. So I spent some time there and um, I love I love America, um, but it's expensive and um, I, I couldn't afford to obviously stay there. So right. let, let me stop you right you there and let me. Add yeah, you. Yeah. So when did your adult life in Thailand begin? What year? So that would have been 2016. Okay. And how long did you live there? Uh, commuting. And I define that as maybe coming back to the UK once a month, twice a month. So in total, like five or six years, I, su I suppose the longest sustained time without coming back to the UK to see friends and family, probably three years, three or four years. But we okay. did so much, but we did so much traveling. You know, I've heard your stream, so you know how it works. You know, in in particular, just, you know, renewing my visa because I could only get 32 tourist visa. So I would just fly up to Hong Kong for three days and uh, come back and um, get my visa stamped and get another 30 days and uh, take my current uh, lady with me uh, each time. So mm -hmm. I got to know Hong Kong very well. And um, that's the system I was using. Okay, now, I know I was told that when you use that system, you, you can mm. only come in two times a year. So how are you getting around that? Well, this is the thing, and, and that's what I'd like to try and help people with, that things do change. Um, at the time I was doing it, um, I didn't know, but I never had a problem. And as you well know, Kelvin, I sent you all my passport um, stamps over. So whatever I say, I can always back it up with media. I don't know how it works yeah. for the live streams, but I have spent some time. Obviously, there was a problem missing you the other night, unfortunately. But I have spent time 
getting all the media ready so people can uh, have an idea what type of lady you'll get out of a go-go, what type of lady you'll get out of a bar, all this kind of stuff. And I have the passport stamps so you can see I was, in fact, doing that. Now, as right. I understand it, this has changed, and this is how I got caught. We, we ended up in IDC. You're quite correct. Okay. Now, I do, I do believe the law has changed, and you can probably yeah. only do that three times. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're kind of getting ahead. We're going to get into that, yeah, why, how you got locked up and how you end up getting in trouble. But I just sure. wanted to kind of go over a few things that, my viewers were interested in what about the cost of living in thailand were you able to live fairly cheaply cheaply over there a uh, fairly uh, cheap i guess i would say probably i had a friend there who could live unbelievably cheap but my problem was you know after retiring from the family business i had a golden handshake and i had a lot of capital and, um, you know, yeah, people that say, you know, oh, what I had, I couldn't possibly spend. Well, I always go back to the analogy. I'm sure you're familiar with a well, very famous boxer, boxer called Mike Tyson. And if you Google him, he actually spent $400, $480 million. Uh, very fast. Uh, so no matter how much money you have, believe me, you can spend it. So... In Pattaya, Thailand, is no different. And if you walk down Walking Street, the ladies are like vacuum cleaners. They will suck money out of you very, very fast mm. and very quickly. Yeah. Now, were you renting mm. or buying while you were so, there? Okay. So I, when I went, um, I went for a couple of weeks. I stayed in the Hilton Hotel in Beach Road. Um just to check it out, do some reconnaissance, see how it all worked. But realize, realize quite quickly, you know, this is just a million times better than being in the UK. So yeah. then the current person I was with, we'll, we'll put in quotes person, and I know you'll know what that means. Um, she was very, or, you know, it was very clever and intelligent so she found a very nice house and explained how it all worked so yeah i did a lot of house hunting and i mm. suppose i saw six six places and four or five uh were okay you know not too bad but then i found one that was really lovely um the price was just right and it was only like five minutes from walking street so it ticked all the boxes yeah. And at that time, that was 22,000 baht per month. So what's that, about $400 or something? Yeah, so in those days, you're very good on the conversions, I've heard you. So 20, 25,000 baht was 500 GBP, which is about okay. 550 to 600 USD. Um, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Now, did you have a swimming pool or anything? Or? Yeah. Yeah, and I have all the pictures. People are more than happy to go on my Facebook. You don't have to do it as a friend yeah. or anything. No, no, we, pretty... we, that's, that's not even uh, required, Martin. I mean, I, I've been on here for three years, and I've got a reputation myself. They know I'm not going to have any guests on here. I understand. That I okay. Of that's nice. Okay. Thank you. I, I would have never, nice. never brought you on here. I understand. I that's you were, very, very you good. Were, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Okay. Now, so, so, quickly try, so, so quickly answer the question. Indeed, it was a shared communal swimming pool, and it was in a nice gated house complex, and you had the pool. In reality, I probably went in that pool with a further along partner probably half a dozen times or six times. I don't know if that's a US thing, half a dozen. But that was when then she had a non, you know, I had my non-biological daughter with her. She was one at a yeah. time. So we were teaching her to swim okay. and kind of stuff like that. So how long were you with her? How long were you we, with this particular one? Um, probably... I don't know, three, four, five years uh, around that time. Yeah. Now, was it a good relationship or did you have problems or 
because guys are always wanting to just come over to Thailand and the Philippines and jump into these relationships. What is it about Thai women, the good and the bad, I guess? Yeah, so if you're referring to my sort of fiance and wife and the end girl, the, sorry, the end, the end lady, um, her name was Naramon Kurisip. Um, and obviously, yes, I've probably had way over in excess of 50 other ladies from short term, long term, uh, a week, for, you know, three weeks, a month, I suppose, mm -hmm. a couple of months. And I have all the pictures to send to you of each lady with yeah. where I found them, how much they cost, what the problems were with them. So people have an idea, you know, what, what they can. That, that will make a good, that will make a good YouTube channel man why don't you no, have you ever thought you. about starting a youtube channel with all uh, that information? yeah as you, as i did send you a link because you know i did cryptocurrency mining and i did love it and enjoy yeah. it but it's saturated and um you know I, I'm, I'm i'm a dinosaur so um yeah I, i'm just as i said it's a privilege and honor to, to be on your one and um you know, you've been so helpful to me with all your videos and stuff. It, you know, I'm only too pleased to try and help you in any way I can with your one and, and, yeah. your, and your subscribers and listeners or what support. You said, or what something, you said something that caught my attention. You said that you can meet a girl in the bar, a go-go bar, and agree to pay her salary, right? Yeah. But you said that a lot of times, after a while, they'll want to go back into the bar because yeah. they like okay. that attention and they, they like right. their lifestyle. Right. So to be clear, we we have to define this. Obviously, a go-go bar, it's very different. You go in there, they work in the bar. It's like a nightclub, da 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 So that's, that's a go-go bar. Now, when I say a bar, that's just a very simple bar with a pool table, you know, and you buy some drinks and that's it. So that's, that's a clear difference. A go-go bar is very different to a bar. So... If you want me to talk about go go bars or bars, yeah, yeah. they're very di they're very different. So you you let me know what you want me to, to talk so about. Did first. you get most of your women out of the go go bar or the bars? Okay, so with the go go bars, and remember, I learned the hard way. I'm not some sort of genius and did all this week research <laughs> and everything went brilliant for me. Anything but that. <laughs> and how I got to know everything was making friends there and um they they tell me all the secrets because i didn't uh, i didn't have a clue so i was very green which is an english term for being naive and stupid so yeah, yeah i went in the go-go bar um i didn't know how it worked all these stunning gorgeous models are dancing around in poles so you know do i pay money and or whatever to get them off that pole and um no obviously you just sit down you have some drinks and then after about 20 minutes those girls come off the poles they come and sit next to you um and then the mm. next shift of girls go on the poles and then those girls yeah. sit there and um obviously try and get you to buy as many drinks as possible while sitting mm. on you, uh, take, putting their breasts in your face, <laughs> putting their nipples in their, in your face. Uh, mm. Yeah, so it was a bit of a steep learning curve. Um, yeah. And then, and then, uh, and then that's the end of it. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. Now, the, sure. the lady that you was with, did you, was she from a go-go bar? So if the, the lady I'm with, like my wife, Naramon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so no, um, this is where I can't wait to, to hopefully talk to some of your other guests. Because every one of them is correct. It just depends what they're looking for. And believe it or not, the one I ended up with four or five years, amazing, my soulmate, everything in common, amazing times. You can't tick all the boxes. Unfortunately, she was a very, very nasty drunk and very, a very dangerous drunk, but a very, very exciting person to be with. So kept my, I never yeah. got bored with her. But how I actually found her was I had joined um, a, a pool club um, to shoot pool 
And, you know, I never wanted to go in tournaments. I hated anything like that. It's terrible. But I did. And then I met in that tournament a guy from Sweden. And uh, he didn't suffer falls gladly. That's a whole other story for another time. But we got to be very good friends. He'd been there a long time. This is a guy that did it all very cheap. And, you know, he explained it all to me. And then he had a girlfriend. And then it was her friend who I ended up with. Oh, okay. And, and so it didn't cost me any money at all. So isn't it, it's an interesting world. And I, I think, you know, it's like I'm a dinosaur. Wasn't that really how people generally did end up in relationships? It would be a friend that introduced you to a friend of theirs who was kind of single or you met them at work or co-worker and all that kind of stuff. Because remember, I'm yeah. doing it in the days of, you know, when there wasn't dating apps. So that's how okay. I met. It didn't cost me so- anything. Okay, what if a guy, are there dating sites? What, what are some good dating sites for single men who are first, you know, they're new to Thailand and they yeah. want to meet women that way because they yeah, may okay. not be as, as outgoing as you? I'm not outgoing. I was a very introvert, shy, Catholic, yeah. uh, virgin mouse. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, but what's right. the, what, give, me, give me a good, give us a good dating site. Okay, so the only one I used, and it was my friend uh, late, much later on, when, um, you know, because we were talking about other stuff, and he uh, told me and showed me one about one called Thai Friendly. Thai Friendly. Thai Friendly. Thai Friendly. How much does it cost? Does it cost anything? Oh, yeah, Thai friend. You know, the usual thing with Tinder and all this kind of stuff, it's free to look, but if you want a message, it's <laughs> $5 a month or it's a deal, you know, for $50 yeah. for, for six months. And then obviously the con, the ridiculous one, Lifetime, you know, it's like $200, right. but why would you want that for a lifetime? Um, That's right. So, yeah, so... I did look at it and go on it. Um, yeah, like eventually, you know, what do they say? You know, you kiss so many frogs and you'll get a prince, whatever that is for a lady. I did go through, yeah. but I am slightly unusual. So I would start the conversation. So, I've, you know, what sort of things are you into, honey? You know, do you like going yeah. to the movies? Do you like going to play pool? Do you like going to Tembin bowling? All this kind of stuff, you know, or what are you. What about what, their uh, English? How would you. Were they good in English? What Thais? Well, I was quite used to broken English, so some are better than others. But you have to factor that in, obviously. But if they don't speak yeah. a damn word of English, then they're obviously only going to be, uh, you know, okay for sex. You're not going to have, like you correctly said, a conversation about Tiger yeah. Woods or Donald Trump or you know, uh, you know, I don't right. know, Osama bin Laden <laughs> or. Um, yeah, but you said something else. You said a couple of things. I want you to kind of uh, talk about this briefly. You sure. said that the partying gets old after a while, and you got to start settling in. Kind of talk about that for a little while, and yeah, then I'm gonna I mean, hit I- you with the how much money you said you were spending every night. Yeah. So I make the analogy, like when you go out for a meal, you know, you have a starter, you know, main course, the dessert, you know, that kind of stuff. And a lot of, as I said, everybody's correct. It depends what you want. A lot of guys don't want to start in the main course. They just want that ice cream. And then mm. the next day they want more ice cream or more ice cream. And they have six months of ice cream. But inevitably you'll get bored of um, having ice cream every day. And um, yeah. I can't, can't quite remember your question, uh, brother, but um, yeah, so you, oh, you said you know things get boring, yeah, they do because anything you do repetitively, um, does get boring, even driving a Lamborghini around or a Ferrari, um, it, it gets boring yeah. after a while, it's all the same. You have to, variety is the spice of life. But you said there's indefinite fun in Thailand, so that's, you could spend true. as much money as you got, you can spend it. Yeah. Because it never yeah, but, stops. Right. But I'm obviously a dinosaur. I'm old. You know, in my, if I was younger, I could have kept it going. But um, I suppose the, the longest I stayed out for probably was 
three, four, five nights in a not in a in a row, and wow. I define that. Wow. I, and I de- and I define that as not coming home and going yeah. to the hotel. That's going from club to club. Um, yeah. Yes. Four so, or five nights. Four or yeah. five nights. <laughs> Would yeah, you sleep I, in the in the pub? No, I mean when I went there, um, it's all the normal touristy kind of clubs along um walking street like i bar and insomnia and all those well known ones they tend to close at 6 a.m um but when i finished you know when i you know started to you know like make friends and stuff and there and certainly with my my wife she knew where then to go what where no one else goes so there's other secret bars that are open yeah. because obviously it's controlled by the police so strictly they should kill at six but some of these other secret bars are half owned by the police um because that was always a mystery to me why are all these nightclubs chatting and bars and stuff and even the other ones open so she said it's because they're half owned by the police so those ones stay open so yeah. if you know well, where let, to let, go you can carry on indefinitely let's get into your situation you got into some trouble over there yeah be as yeah. briefly as you can and kind of get to the point yeah what happened what happened okay so as i've said i was used to that system i was using but i got complacent um if i go to the airport to fly to hong kong or lao or vietnam or wherever um and i was a week over my visa and that it would be like a three thousand baht fine which is about fifty dollars um and you know that's it you know it's no problem at all um so yeah i mean you you know obviously you can go to the immigration office you know and avoid that you know and and do it officially and extend it and that's what happened to you what happened to you yeah, so I was used to paying those fines and, you know, paying them at the airport. So, and I was only like a two, three days, a week max. So then just, you know, it's unbelievable, you know, sort of, um, I can say it's not sort of bad luck, but o- oversight, if you look. we I got stopped on the police stop, which they do do. They, they check, you know, if you've been drink, drinking. Um, I mean, it's like WhatsApp groups and things people are on and they tell you where the ch- police check stops are. And yeah. all that. But I was not interested in it because I would have my wife driving and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. she was, we were stopped, but they wanted to see my passport. And then they said, oh, all right, all right. and they laugh and they get excited. Mr. Mr. You're overstay, you're overstay. And I said, what do you mean overstay? Yeah, oh, you're overstaying your visa. Oh, I said, that's okay. Was it a week or two? And obviously, that's why I love Thailand. It's, you know, completely corrupt. So you can bribe your way out of anything. So I said, you know, it's usually 3000 but, you know, you, you, you're sort of a nice police officer and that. He's 5000 But Oh, no, 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 we can't do, deal with this. This is like um, immigration uh, police that has to deal with it. So I said, oh, yeah. that's okay then. So as long as I'm, yeah, you know, I've never been in trouble in my life with the police ever or anything like that. There's it was no need to, for me to be. But, um, yeah, so I just said, that's fine. You know, as long as I'm not going to the monkey house, you know, jail or anything like that. Prison. Oh, no, 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 you're not going to jail or prison. You're going to immigration detention centre. Oh, okay then, cool. So, uh, yeah, then. Is that, that what they called it? They call yeah. it the Immigration Detention Center. I, yeah, it's called IDC, and then it's and that's in Bangkok, and that's when the horror story, obviously, truly began. Uh, when I found out what that was. <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay, they booked you in, and what did they charge you with? Something? Oh, oh. Well, you charged yeah. with just overstaying. It's unbelievable, but yeah, as I said, you've seen the passport. I, I'd actually overstayed on my visa by one day, um, and there'd be all these, yeah, and there'd be a lot of know it alls that do Google and say, "Oh, he's all wrong," you know. You can be a one day overstay or three week week overstay. It's a fine, and that's the end of it. That is absolutely correct if you put your hands up and own up to it. However, if you yeah. get caught. That's a different system and ball game. If you're one day over, 
That's Immigration Detention Centre. Do you want me to do the final right. part to it, um, brother, or do you want me to tell you rest about IDC? Do you want me to say, like, the bombshell of what that one yeah, day they, okay, you, you thought that You thought that you were just going to be there maybe um, to check in, pay your fan, and leave, but you were there longer than, than, than that. How long were oh, you no, there? I, I mean, um, <laughs> you know, when you go to, like, immigration, you know, office and that, you know, it's an office and an immigration detention centre, you can't even call it a jail or a prison. It's just like a pen, a holding cell with 50, 60 people in it. And that's where you're going and you realise you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. Um, that's certainly yeah. for sure. So, you know, it's no one to like talk to or discuss. And obviously, they take, you know, I'm going to put in quotes, you know, take your phone, but obviously, they steal it. And I had about yeah. 20,000 baht on me, and that was taken. And uh, all of my Who clothes as well. It? Who took the, it? When I went into, you know, immigration, you have to strip off. So, oh, okay. you, you, you strip down to your shorts and obviously all your personal items are kept for you when you go, when you're, de you know, when you're deported back to your country of residence. But uh, obviously yeah. that, that never happened. Somehow they all uh, yeah. got lost. Uh, so how long, how long did you stay in jail? Yeah. I mean, I you know you say jail, but that would be like, um, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, I mean that how long were you in there? Two years. Uh, no, two, uh, two months. You got me. I was going to say that jail is like immigration. Uh, sorry, jail is like Disneyland. And this place is yeah. like hell. This makes any yeah. jail look fun. This is seriously really, really nasty in there. And uh, because yeah. there's so much, you know, red tape and my family having to find me. And this is all because my phone was taken away from me and I couldn't get in touch with any of my friends to come and rescue me. You know, um, yeah, eventually, you know, my, my family got in touch with the embassy in London and then they, and then they got in touch with the bank embassy in Bangkok and they found me very luckily. And I'm very lucky yeah. to have a family that's, luckily financially well off and they could uh, start making things happen fast for me otherwise i'd still be in there probably yeah you so you were there for 60 days two months you said yeah two months yeah so what kind of conditions were you were, okay. were you beat did, did they fight did you get in fights or something or? okay i mean first of all it doesn't help i'm actually a vegetarian so i don't eat any meat so when they dish up your food three times a, a day, I mean, I wouldn't, even if you, I think you were a carnival meat eater, you wouldn't want to eat that meat. That consists of chicken feet <laughs> and fish head soup. <laughs> so what I had was three bowls of rice to live on a day. And, um, yeah, wow. I got rather hungry. I do have a picture of me coming out of IDC and a picture of me now. So I was like a skeleton when I came out. Now, if you want to talk about death threats and all that kind of stuff and fights and what I saw, we could do an hour, two, three hours and all that kind of stuff. So no, I, I, you, I just want, want to give my viewers a general idea of the conditions in there. That's all, just a general idea yeah, you know, because I mean, they think uh, they think they can come over there and just run, run rampant through the Philippines and Thailand, but they've got something for you over there, don't they? Yeah, I mean, as we say here, a picture's worth a million words. Uh, I suppose a video's ten million words. So yeah, there's there's a few videos on YouTube. Uh, I've seen you, so you can see graphically what it is actually like um and it's actually a lot worse than that obviously to actually be in there uh very very dangerous yeah. and um you have to like learn very fast and make friends very fast because uh, there's plenty of people that get killed there and die there and uh they don't give a damn you know yeah. <laughs> well you told me that your girlfriend your soulmate ran yeah. off with your money and stuff yeah, I mean, why you, in, why you were in yeah. there? 
Yeah, so obviously that was more like the end result, the sort of bombshell, which, you know, things were bad enough and everything else. Um, obviously, you know, when it got to the stage, I was sort of being deported because I said to them, oh, I want to stay in Thailand, you know, I've got a wife and, you know, a daughter and a house and a business and all this kind of stuff. But there's no wiggle room just for an overstay of one day. You're going back to the UK. Oh, OK, then. Right. So when I go back to the UK, so, you know, how long is it, you know, until I can come back? thinking stupidly and naively I could jump on the plane and come back again. And then that was the worst news of all. For I was yeah. actually in banned for five years. Five, five years. Banned year, ban wow. for five years. <laughs> wow. You didn't, you couldn't appeal that? So I said to them, you know, this is the UK embassy. These were the, the UK embassy representatives that came and saw me. And I said, you know, I don't care, you know, if I've got to hire a, um, I don't know, a battalion of ruthless, expensive lawyers, but I'm staying. And they said, there's just no way. We've had many cases like this. And we've had people that have just been a few hours over their visa and they got five-year ban. Um, so in that time, I must admit, I had needed to get home because I was getting yeah. ill, had a leg infection. Um, I was also suffering from sort of lack of nutrition. Um, yeah, so, so obviously I had to come home. I must admit, things did get bad, so bad. I did promise myself in it, I ain't never coming back to Thailand again. And I'm not going anywhere in the damn world again because you can get caught out by a tiny loophole yeah. like this and you can get, you know, to the point, you know, you, you sort of, you know, are going to die in here. And I saw wow. people do yeah. do that. So I did actually decide then and there I was going to burn my passport and never go anywhere again. But obviously coming back and then you know, trying to sort of deal with it and cope with it all. You know, what they say, mm. time heals all wounds. Um, I did do a further little bit of research into it, and you're quite right. There are law firms out there that can appeal it, and they say they have had some yeah. success. But, of course, it's just they're going to take 50 How long has it been? How long has it been? So that was uh, one year now... Uh, this September, so I have four years left to, to you serve. Got four so years left. Out. Yeah, I know. We were talking yesterday. You really missed that place. <laughs> well, you know, because it depends what you're coming back to. So I, you know, I was like 32 degrees with air conditioning and and Thailand and and patty and everything else, and I'm coming back to the UK. You know, and it's then September. You know, it's like. Two degrees C. I don't know. Do you work in Fahrenheit <laughs> over there? Does does Celsius work for you or? No, no. We do Fahrenheit in America. So my, most of my viewers are America. So what would right. that be? Well, you're I'm the a conversion a man, uh, <laughs> Kelvin. Um, it's I'm cold. Yeah, it's um, cold. Yeah. It's cold. It's, so it's yeah. two degrees. So yeah, it was so snow on the ground. Did you have a woman waiting? Back. Now, how old was the lady? I need to ask you, how old was the Thai woman? Uh, th 37. 37? Mm. So what What are your prospects of dating a nice looking, because you sent me a picture, I put it on my community page. Right. A nice looking woman like that in the UK. A nice yeah, so obviously, woman. obviously I'm back here in Stuck. So I did try Tinder and Bumble and a few others. I have had some dates. Um, but, of course, the main problem is, and that might be another feature you might consider doing, I'd, I'd love to talk about it, actually retiring was the hardest thing for me, was because initially it's back to the ice cream thing, oh, this is good, I don't have to get up early, I can stay up late, you know, I can do what I damn well like. But you lose that schedule, you lose that kind of routine, and, again, that gets very boring and very monotonous and very tedious after a while. Yeah. So you have a lot of time. So the problem with dating people on Tinder and Bumble, what I tried on Facebook, is most 90% of them, 99% of them, all work. 
and I don't. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, it's going to be very limited to to go to travelling because they're going to get probably what five, six weeks vacation, annual leave. Yeah, but you I know. mean, my point, my point, Martin is, yeah, the women in the UK, the women yeah. in the UK. They're not going to treat you the same way the women in Thailand no. will. No, so I can send you pictures of the ladies I dated in the UK. They're of my age, 52, 55. They're very large ladies, um, you yeah. know, but we have, we have a saying, you know, any port in a storm. So I was going from a trophy wife, uh, soulmate, you know, to a big old lump. But they were very, very yeah. nice yeah. people. Um, but yeah. you know, it, you know, obviously, you have to be realistic. But you know, yeah, you're right. only going to find someone at your level. And unfortunately, I'm fat, old, and ugly, yeah. so I'm only going to really yeah. attract those kind of ladies. Now, let me ask you one last thing before we get off here. What advice would you give to new men wanting to relocate? To Thailand, but specifically Patia, since you know so much about Patia, what you know, what kind of advice would you have for them? Uh, depends how much capital they're bringing, and depends what their incomes are. Um, you know, but yeah, if you if you have a million dollars, you can spend that quite easily. Um, you know, but if you're that sort of person, you have ten thousand dollars. Um, that can ask you last you an awful long time. As I said, my other friend who was the ultimate, he was living on he was living on five hundred dollars a month, five hundred a month, and his yeah, place I mean, was. Would, would you would you advise them to meet the woman online? Meet her at the go no. go bar. Meet her at no. the bar. Meet her through a friend. No, no, what would you no. Suggest? I mean, all this staging and every all these dating apps, from what I've heard on your shows, it's lunacy. Because, you know, you fly all that way and you meet the girl, okay? Now, you talk about Tinder and that, you know, normal dating. I mean, what is the chances of you then, like, having a relationship with the first, second, third, fourth pe person on, on Tinder? It's never going to happen. Yeah. So. What, yeah. what's the chances are you know you can talk to these people on the phone get pictures all this kind of stuff but when you get there honestly within a minute you might well be wanting to escape from them and i i had a lady yeah. just like this you know right. i'd come back to the well, uk I'm, I'm, we're talking about the new guy he just yeah. getting off the plane martin yeah what do you want him to do get a hotel okay. what's a nice hotel what's a nice cheap hotel on beach road that okay. you could just tell us right off the top of your head. Uh, I must admit, I only stayed in the, the more expensive ones like um, Hilton. Yeah. The middle one is uh, like the Royal Cliff. Obviously, now Royal you know, Cliff. If you go okay. Royal Cliff. What about if a you good restaurant? On... What about a good restaurant when he gets yeah, off the plane? I... I mean, that's what I love about Thailand. Uh, um, it's all 24 hours. And importantly, all the mini fridges are stocked with booze and chocolate yeah. or candy. As give, us say. One. give us one good one that he can go and get some good Thai food on Beach Road. <laughs> Uh, if you've got the money, the Hilton's brilliant because it's on Beach Road and on Beach Road, all the freelancers stand under trees. So you can walk out the Hilton and walk along chatting to ladies and you can get a freelancer straight away. Um, and also with the Hilton, it is integrated with Central Festival, which is a big shopping mall. So you can go and get all your Adidas and Nike stuff and there's a bowling alley there and a cinema and all this kind of stuff. I know we're running yeah. uh, short of time. So I really do want to get this one in because it's really, okay. really good. Uh, a friend yeah. told me there's a step, there's a service called the Devil Bus VIP. Um, you know, I can send you the links and everything for it. And um, it's a, you know, a, a, what do I call it in America? It's a van, you know, like in the A team. Is it a GMC? You know, it's like a sort of okay. nightclub disco van. So. Uh, then obviously on the website you can then choose uh, you know from a dozen two dozen ladies you can have one lady or two ladies or three ladies now how, and much be, cost? how much does uh, a typical go-go girl cost <laughs> just give us a price go-go-go uh, short term um, 
probably two uh two thousand bar so i don't know forty dollars or something short term long term yeah. uh maybe five thousand bar and i see if you can get them to go home with you as well because they don't have to because they know they're gonna make a lot of money working the pole and the and the drinks but just going back to that devil van um if you get a car of a taxi uh, from BKK, uh, Bangkok International Airport to Pattaya, that uh, could cost you like fifty dollars, sixty dollars. So you're going to get the services of the van, and you're going to be met with two really lovely girls, and you can read all the reviews about how good they do blowjobs and you know fuck you and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Now, what's um, the name of the place? What's the name of that again? Uh, let me just get it on my phone for you. Um, da, 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 da. The Devil's Van or something you said? Yeah. Uh, I've got so much ready for you. Something like Devil's Van, VIP, um, Patio. If you put that in Google, it will come up. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking, like, from what I've heard from some of your uh, viewers, they want like someone to sort of hold their hand um, right. when they get into BKK, and that's what yeah. I would um, fully recommend. How do I get this video back up, um, Kelvin? Well, we're getting ready I've to get off here anyway. I want to thank you because I know you got a you got a schedule. You got to head out, and we'll we'll come. I have you back on. I'm gonna have you back on to the panel next yeah. Tuesday. Very yeah, quickly, yeah. just ju just to finish on on that devil's vein, because you'll find it just so how it finishes. So if you want, hello. Well, thank y'all so much for stopping by. I think I lost him. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. I'll see y'all next time.